I definitely know what Auto on now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like a, a TV series. Now we're on. Okay. So it is uh, my pleasure to read this proclamation. Whereas the 2014 Bridgewater Rainham Regional High School Varsity Girls softball team rocketed in their efforts to take first place and win the state championship on Saturday, June 14, 2014. Whereas they forged together in all aspects as a team, displaying every determination and talent they possess. And whereas Coach Mike Carosa, after coaching for 17 years, has seen his first state championship win in addition to the Bridgewater Rainham Regional High School for a historic title, and whereas their 25 to 1 season and 9 to 0 final win showed what true teamwork could do for this outstanding group of girls. Now, therefore, we, the Board of Selectmen, do hereby proclaim June 14 as the Bridgewater Rainham. 2014 Varsity Girls Softball State Champions Day. Congratulations. <laughs> now, is there anybody or any, any several of you that want to speak? Please do so. You, 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 go ahead. You're in the corner. It's just make sure you're talking into the mic. Hi. Pull the mic up. Hi, my name is Holly Gree. Um, I'm one of the seniors on the softball team. And I'd like to thank the town of Rainham on behalf of the VR softball team in um, giving us this great honor and giving us this day. And really, like, we can't express in words how much this means to us. And I'd like to thank you from the deepest of our hearts. Well, thank, thank you. you so much for that. Thank you. Wonderful. <laughs> Is that all fine? Now, who among you will accept this on behalf of the group? <laughs> After such a great speech, you should. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Shall we have a picture here? Sure. Yep. Chief King has got his camera. Thank you. Good. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so now on to a, a very important part of our meeting tonight. Excuse it, me, sir. Go right, right ahead. I, I want to say something. <laughs> go ahead. I'm sorry. You go right ahead. You um, cast me be by. by. You're awesome. You are awesome. You are wonderful. And I know some of you are going on to college, and I hope that you'll all continue playing ball. I want to hear, see your names in the newspapers all the time. Great job, girls. Thank you very much. Yo, please. <laughs> yeah, congratulations. I was in Worcester when you were going to play the game, and yes. had it not been for some uh, food poisoning from a Mexican restaurant. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, did you get that? Yeah. No. <laughs> no, Lou, Lou, <laughs> Lou was smart. Yeah. I, I should have left. Um, no, but congratulations. We're extremely proud of everything uh, that you've accomplished. I know there's only two seniors. Um, so who knows, you might be back here next year. And I know our district attorney is here, and he and I, yes. I'm sure, uh, are very uh, happy for you, but also a little envious of all the great press you've got. <laughs> <laughs> you've, you've, you've taken the Hernandez kids completely <laughs> <laughs> out of the media. So congratulations to that as well. Um, and again, we appreciate you coming in. You've made us so very proud, and I think it's, it's the pinnacle of where we've come with the BS School District. We had a low point there for a while, yep. and uh, students like you have, have really been what's turned BR back around to, to the excellence it's been used to for so long. So thank you for that, and congratulations. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, do you want to let them get a picture? In? Maybe in front of sure. the, fl the, fl the flag. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> 
So are we all set, Boyd? Yeah, now you can do it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I was anxious to get on to the next part of our agenda tonight, which, which is to dedicate the town report. And it is my privilege to dedicate the town report to retired police chief Lou Pacheco. <laughs> and, I have to read the dedication, and Marie and Joe are going to want to say something. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so bear with me. Uh, retired Police Chief Lou Pacheco was born in Rainham and has been a lifelong resident. Lou attended Rainham schools and graduated from Bridgewater Rainham Regional High School in 1966. He served in the Force Recon Unit, the Marine Corps, from 1967 to 1971. After the Corps, he joined the Rainham Police Department as a civilian dispatcher and special police officer in 1972. He rose through the ranks, holding every position from patrol officer to sergeant, from lieutenant to captain, then deputy chief, and finally chief of police. He spent time as the town's K-9 officer, firearms, firearms instructor, detective, undercover narcotics investigator, patrol supervisor, and shift commander. From 1985 to 1990, then Captain Pacheco assumed duties as the director of the Bristol County Drug Task Force at the district attorney's office. The unit seized over $300 million in drugs, guns, and property. Chief Pacheco received a Bachelor's of Science in Criminal Justice from Northeastern and a Master's in Public Administration from Bridgewater State College. After returning to Rainham, he started REACT, the Regional Electronics and Computer Crime Task Force, which did some groundbreaking work in video and computer forensics as well as internet safety. He speaks and teaches around the country on law enforcement and the internet, grant writing and counterterrorism for law enforcement. He is currently the Chief of Operations for the Bristol County District Attorney's Office. He has taught young police officers at the Massachusetts Police Academy since 1978. He is still actively involved in the Rainham, in Rainham as a member of the Bridgewater Rainham School Committee and the Historical Commission. Lou is married to Lisa Pacheco and they show purebred dogs and run a family-owned pet care business here in Rainham. He has five children, three of whom have followed his footsteps into law enforcement in the Rainham Police Department. 
Four generations of Pachicos have now served on the Rainham Police Department, including Lou's grandfather and uncle. Lou will long be remembered for his strong leadership of the department. His accomplishments are too many to list, but bringing Brainham's police department into the 21st century with the use of technology, use of the community policing model, and school resource offices are an important part of his legacy. His dedication to leaving every situation a little better than you found it has served the department, the town, and the community well. Therefore, in honor of his lifelong commitment to the Rainham Police Department and better policing, the Board of Selectmen proudly dedicates Rainham's 213, 2013 annual town report to Louis J. Pacheco, signed Joseph Pacheco, Richard Chavo, and Marie Smith. Move. was up here, he would say it's going to be a short speech, and then he'd give a long speech. <laughs> but I am going to give a, a basically a short speech. I, I couldn't be more honored. Uh, the gentleman that put me on the police department's in the, in the back corner, Slackman. I've worked with uh, this board and Randy for four years, and, uh, and we can count. Um, when they first mentioned it, it's difficult to, um, to to get an award like this because when it was first mentioned to me that uh, it might happen, uh, I was seriously considered turning it down because nothing in police work is uh, done alone, or singly, nothing at all. I mean, it's the <clears throat> ultimate team team thing. So, what Chief King built on. Um, we build on what I built on, the next crew will build on. But nothing at all is done alone. Everything that was mentioned in that uh, nice article that Randy wrote um, was done with a group of people. I mean, there's dozens of Rainham cops standing behind me right now. Uh, Jordan, Bonaparte, uh, Volsic, um, and, and the list goes on and on and on and on. So, um, I did say to most of the recruits to leave situation a little better than what you found it. Um, <clears throat> one of the chiefs I taught as a recruit mentioned that the other day. And, uh, you know, to have, uh, like I say, the man that put me on, on my entire family, <clears throat> my boss for, uh, I don't know, I think he outlasted three marriages. <laughs> And he, and he and I never fought, never argued. Well, maybe once in a while. Um, it's just uh, it's just something special, and uh, I, I, you know, then, because, you know, I'm here. This is the past that we're talking about now. Um, and I didn't really think that that was, you know, uh, something that, that I should stand up here and take credit for, but my father told me that half the job is getting it done and half the job is letting people know you did it. So I think if we, uh, if we uh, get up here and we um, let people know that, you know, that when we first started back in uh, 73, I think it was, <coughs> Mr. McKinnon said he wanted to take the town from we's and they's, I mean from they's and us's, and change it all to we's, um, so everybody would be together. That's what we worked for. I think we did a pretty good job. And thank you. saying thank you. Thank you so very much for all the years of service you've put in and are still putting in. 
I like to call you my friend because I really do think you are my friend. Well, and you so have been for so many years. You started in 72 and I started in 70. <laughs> so you know what? <laughs> I've been very lucky to have uh, friends as my bosses all the way through. And uh, I still got a friend as my boss. So from, uh, my right. MO has not changed. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know why? Because you portray it that way, Lou. It's the way you do your job, the way you handle your job. I mean, people wouldn't respond to you if you weren't the way you are. And you have done one heck of a job. You really have. And I'm proud to be serving with you on the cable board. We're still doing that. And we're making such advancements. Again, you will be, get, you will be on a part that's coming forward. Nothing is stagnant. So I congratulate you, and I do again thank you so much. And just as a footnote, the school resource officer was your project in Chief Kings. Yes, <laughs> it was. It was. We did good, Peter. We did good. Yes, we did. Yes, you did. And and that was great. That was our project, and and I was proud to be part of it. Really. Well, but the foresight that you had to make sure that it was funded, it wasn't just granted for three right. years and went away. You wouldn't allow it to happen until it was fully funded and integral. Right. And Chief King was on the same page. And he backed me up on it 100%. So that was that was a good teamwork. And that's why teamwork. It works. That's why it works. We have a speed camp going in the summers now with 117 yep. people with uh, one police officer and one volunteer. Amazing, isn't it? How things progress when they're good things and they all work. People are all working together to make sure that they continue. Good job, Lou. Please don't thank me. I enjoyed almost every minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet there were a couple of shady ones. <laughs> well, a couple of shootings that you've got. Yeah, that Joe. Joe. I avoided Mexico all week. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, was that sure, Jan? Yeah. <laughs> I, um, I I was thinking about uh, what I was going to say on the way over here. And, the best thing that came to mind was Captain Good had a baseball card, and now you have a town report. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, we, uh, we, the three of us collectively, when we were making a decision who this was going to go to, it was an easy decision. Um, we like to let stuff stew for a few years before we give it out. Uh, I think in some instances this case wasn't any different. It could have been given out right away. Um, but I think it adds to um, to the credibility of, of, of this because it showed that your legacy was able to carry on uh, after your retirement. And I think um, that in and of itself is something to talk about. You know, when my friend, our friend, Don McKinnon retired, I said to him, I said that the best thing he did was <laughs> to leave a legacy for his granddaughter and his grandson to uh, be able to hear about and have people talk about. Uh, and I certainly think um, that that's no different for you. Uh, and as you know, I'm on the campaign trail right now, and. Uh, people either think you or the senator or my father. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's anybody but my father. I, I, <laughs> so, you know, if, if somebody asks you, I, I always say it depends on if you like him or not, and if you do, then he is my dad. <laughs> and, and if not, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and if not, I just say he got lucky with a good last name. But <laughs> uh, congratulations, and uh, thank you for uh, accepting. Thank you very much. Uh, town of Rainier was really a special, special town. Um, you know, we, we started, we had so many firsts that Chief King started and, and we followed through on. You couldn't even list them all. And, uh, you know, and drugs was a major problem. We went down and worked out of the district attorney's office. And uh, when the district attorney's office didn't seem to be working for us, which some of the people in this room know, uh, Rainham was one of the one of the big movers, the first movers and shakers into put, trying to get somebody into the office that was more responsive to the people and more responsive to the crimes that happened at the time. And uh, I was so um, honored and, and just once again, it's just an enjoyment to go down and work at the Bristol District Attorney's Office now. Keeping in mind that eight years ago they were picketing outside the office because cases weren't being solved. Picketing, picketing with signs like you couldn't get into the doors. And now we've solved um, 20, 
three, I, I'm gonna have to let the district attorney, I think it's 23 out of 24, Mr. District Attorney? Yes, yeah, so, something like that. Yeah, 20, 22 out of 24. 22 out of 24. 23. Homicides and one the last 23 of the 24 homicide cases and everybody once again it's everybody works together down there. I, I testified today in a homicide trial and I'm the chief of operations but when when it comes push comes to shove everybody works it's the same um, method and the same uh, thing that we did here in Rainham and I'm lucky to be able to continue on because there are not many spots for old cops. There's, there's, there's good cops and there's bold cops, but there's no old cops. So, uh, Chief, let me just see if uh, one of your mentors would like to say a few words. Don, in the back, have you uh, anything to add to what's been? I can't add to what's been said, but uh, when, when Lou and, and, and Peter got together, it was almost like a team, and uh, the Chief King, of course, when he started the transition from what was almost the 18th century, I don't mean to say it, but it was. <laughs> <laughs> and then moved into the 19th and the 20th. But, but when uh, Chief Pacheco uh, moved not into the 21st century, but he created things for the 21st century that made it what it was. So often you know of people who have joined a time frame and done done well in the time frame. But until you know people like Lou Pacheco, you don't know people who created the change in the in the time. And that's what uh, Lou Pacheco so it was my honor originally to be one of three to appoint him in the first place and as he was promoted on up through the through the chain and uh, every job he did he did well of course and we know that otherwise we wouldn't be here. And uh, I really made an effort to, to, to be here. I was in Boston and I really wanted to be here for, to watch this dedication because uh, he is, Lou Pacheco was one of a kind. Uh, a lot of people in the Commonwealth of Mass, not my town of don't really know how advanced he was in, and I like to use the word because I can't use it, computers. <laughs> <laughs> so, he moved people. And the other thing about the talent of somebody like Chief Pacheco is that he not only, this is, this is not easy to do, Peter King did the same thing. Not only was he bright enough to do it, but he was humble enough to delegate it. So that therefore, when he says he shares what the, the people did with him, it's because he did share the job, he moved people into other, what it was it, the the, uh, the latest one with they, where they shoot you and you gotta fall down, Lou, what was that one? You were hard. You were hard to convince, Mr. Slackman. You made me do it twice. <laughs> but I don't mean to say you didn't have some friends, but I wasn't the one doing the shooting. <laughs> you, you taught us things so that we would move into the next next situation. So thank you, Mr. Chairman, for your recognition of. And certainly you. not the least, but. Sam Sutter, you may have a comment or two to make. Sure. Uh, Mr. Um, David, would welcome it. I, um, I have several, actually. Is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, Marie, I was very interested to hear, um, Joe, that was a, a wonderful line about what you say when they think that Lou or Mark is your father. I, I'm going to remember that in case I ever get that opportunity with my relationship with somebody. But uh, Marie, I was very interested to hear you say that you started in 1970, yes. and Lou in 1972, because I wasn't even born. <laughs> sure. Now I have three thoughts about um, the chief. First of all, uh, he is the best friend, my best friend, best friend I've ever had, and the best friend anybody could ever ask for. He is a fiercely loyal, uh, but also uh, very wise, very steady and uh, just uh, and has a wonderful personality and uh, as Lisa and I have discussed, 
is in a good mood almost every day that I encounter him. I have to push him to get him in a bad mood, <laughs> which I sometimes, I sometimes <laughs> see him doing. Um, secondly, I think that there have been uh, several ref references to his, his talent, which is uh, self-evident and abundant. I mean, not only is he extremely smart, but also um, an independent and innovative thinker. I think Raynham, Raynham benefited from uh, his, his independence of thought, his, his innovative approach to matters. Um, and also, uh, he has a, a true gift, as there have also been references to, uh, with people. Um, when I met him, or shortly after I met him, I heard that he was, you know that expression, the whisperer, they made a movie about Robert Red, with Robert Redford as the lead, the horse whisperer. I heard Lou was a dog whisperer. I actually, because of the way he handles difficult personnel matters at the DA's office, I sometimes call him the human being whisperer because he's, he's, that, he's that good. And, um, and finally, um, uh, I would be, um, I, I feel I have to say since the subject came up, um, that uh, Rain M was being modest with respect to my um, uh, good fortune in becoming district attorney. I think the comment was made by maybe Lou or somebody that uh, Raynham was instrumental in, uh, in my winning that election. I would say that um, Lou and Raynham was more than that, it was pivotal. This was the, my base of support from the very beginning at the first meeting I had. Um, Joe was there, Lou was there, um, and, uh, and there were only a couple of other people there, so I'm um, indebted to um, to the town, um, but this is uh, about Lou, and I'm particularly uh, indebted to Lou, and I think that this is a great honor, and you deserve it, and I'm proud to be a very small part of it. Thank you very much. Mr. Uh, Mr. Sutter didn't understand when the town rang him back him. Uh, we had a, uh, a function for him uh, over on the uh, at the, at the veterans area over at the old poor farm. And he couldn't believe we had the treasurer, the sewer department, the highway, the uh, uh, dog catcher and the assistant dog catcher, uh, <laughs> and uh, all, all the selectmen and everybody in the town. So he knew that he had a solid base here. Well, so based on all of these comments, I think perhaps we should consider dedicating next year's report to <laughs> you because we've got enough material. Thank you, sir. We have enough material. Uh, but be, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask your lovely wife, Lisa. Do you have anything to say on this occasion? Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> All good. Um, I'm very proud of my husband. He, uh, what Sam said, he has a true gift with people. Uh, he's taught me so much as a person. I try to emulate his uh, his ways, his positive outlook on life, always bringing the positive to something and, and turning things around, and um, and I'm very blessed. Wonderful. Thank you so much.
So, thanks, Chief. Go ahead. Just a, just a quick, a quick minute. I have the DVD of the parade, uh, the conservation. I mean, the Historical Society has a copy, and there's also a copy at the library. And I'd like to present this to the board. Thank for you. Whatever they feel. Thank you, Chief. We'll put that in the library. I got to get back on track here. Thank you. So we, we got a little bit out of order to handle some of the, uh, the uh, ceremony. Uh, may I have a motion on the minutes of the last meeting? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good. The motion. We have uh, our uh, department heads, uh, John Chabonos here, the Director of Community Planning and Development. John? have in front of you the most recent uh, monthly report. Um, first thing is, uh, Mr. Shiva was nice enough to sign earlier tonight the grant application. Uh, we're going to be applying for South Coast Rail technical assistance money to produce an informational brochure um, for the town to help with economic development. Um, after having a conversation, um, a while back with the executive director of the Taunton Area Chamber of Commerce, she said that if the town produced a brochure, she'd be more than happy to keep and distribute copies to any prospective businesses looking to locate in the area. So originally, uh, we were going to use some money. The Board of Overseers for the revolving fund, the Economic Development Revolving Fund, we're going to use some of the funds that we have for that. However, this grant opportunity came up, so um, I think it was uh, Joe and Marie uh, who gave feedback um, to say, yeah, let's, 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 let's go for this so we can free up some money with the revolving fund to do some other things. So I think we have a really good shot because I think this is going to um, meet the goals of the South Coast Rail Grant Project. So I'm optimistic we, we should get good. awarded this. That'd be wonderful. Um, the planning board voted on June 5th to extend the temporary certificate of occupancy for Walmart to August 11th because, as people can see, they haven't had a chance to get out there and finish the paving on Route 138, and they're still working through some access issues for the pump station with the sewer department. So that TCO has been extended out to August. And um, there was a project a um, few years back that never got past the preliminary stage, but it's going to be coming back uh, called Bassett Knoll Estates. It's actually going to be most likely in two phases. Um, both are going to be open space residential divine, uh, design subdivisions. One of si approximately 64 units. The other one's going to be approximately 30 units. So that's something that was on, um, on the back burner for a while, but it's being reactivated. Um, and want to make the board aware that I feel that a phone call um, within the last couple of weeks on the vacant piece of land uh, down near the Wendy's on Route 44, known as 1198 New State Highway, um, there's the potential for a 20,000 square foot office building to be constructed on that property. Um, I guess the owner of the pro I guess the owner of the property who called me and was inquiring about um, hiring an engineer in the permitting process. So uh, keep that in the back of your mind. That's gonna, that might be coming up on the horizon. And just um, a few a few zoning bylaw amendments that um, I've been working on with the planning board and with the building commissioner. Um, one is to will be to help establish the ability for when a condo development is built with multiple units, multiple buildings, that when the developer seeks occupancy permits, they can do it in phases as well. Um, instead of waiting for the whole project to be completed and go all at once, um, this is something that um, the building commissioner supports, giving the flexibility of a developer to come in and seek um, occupancy permits in phases because sometimes that's advantageous for the developer to be able to fund future phases of the project so we figured that's a good that's that's a good way for the town to be flexible when th these projects come forward um, another one is um, the building commissioner wants to amend the definition of temporary sign um, to include um, banners 
when businesses open have a grand opening or something along those lines. Also, the, um, in reviewing the adult retirement community bylaw, it struck me how, unlike other towns that have a bylaw like this, Rainham doesn't have a restriction on how long a resident in one of these units can stay under the age of 55. Now, we have a provision where one of the spouses can be under the age of 55, or if it happens to be a health care provider who needs to come in and stay with a resident who's over 55 in these communities, those are special provisions. However, there's no provision that would limit the amount of time, say, a child or a grandchild could potentially come in and stay with, with somebody who's not a health care worker, not a handicapped person, a handicapped adult, not a spouse. So um, we're going to be putting forward an amendment to put a provision like that because one of the reasons that people locate in an over 55 housing community is the quiet and the peace and to be around pe all the people who are over 55. And it, it presents the potential for um, someone taking advantage, moving in and having small children, making noise, and kind of defeating the purpose of this type of community. So I think that's a, that's a reasonable change, and uh, other towns have this type of provision in there. And lastly, um, the building commissioner and I have started working on a, um, a zoning use table for the zoning bylaws, because this is something, again, a lot of towns have in their bylaws. Rainham doesn't yet. Um, it's, a, it's a more user-friendly thing. Instead of having to sift through pages of text to see what type of uses are allowed in what district, whether it's allowed by right or special permit, I've developed a spreadsheet that's being reviewed by the building commissioner. It's going to be in table format. It's going to, across the top, it's going to be the zoning districts, the uses, and it's going to say yes, no, special permit planning board, special permit ZBA, so someone could just flip to that page and say that's boom, boom, excellent. here it is. I like that. So I think... Dennis Machado and I are going to be, there are going to be subsequent tweaks of the zoning bylaws that come out of this, you know, maybe redundancies or some inconsistencies, inconsistencies in our zoning bylaws that are uncovered by doing this. So I think this will be start of a, the start of a process of making our zoning bylaws a lot more user friendly, a lot tighter, and a lot more understandable. So that's what I'm hoping. Good. Good. Thank okay. you, John. Any any questions over here? No, no? I have none. Thanks, John. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, it, it. My apologies to to you all for the hearings. Uh, if you have a little bit more patience, we had a busy agenda, as you probably know, so far. But we have the chief of police here. Are you okay with that, chief? Okay. So there are three public hearings. The first one here that I have is the uh, uh, the uh, application for. Apple New England LLC doing business as Applebee's Neighborhood Grill and Bar for a change of beneficial ownership, pledge of license, and pledge of inventory at 800 to 802 Route 44. Uh, they've already uh, been approved by the state, so they're not attending, and I need a motion to approve this. A motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor, aye. Okay. So we have that. Uh, next, and not in any particular order, the other two. Uh, this is the Board of Selectmen here. I, uh, application of Jillian's Pooch Paradise, Jillian Simpson, Taunton, Mass, owner for a kennel license at 890 Broadway, building number two. Uh, and so uh, we would ask uh, you to come up and speak before the board, if you would, Jillian. Good evening. Um, yeah. I'm opening up the Jillian's Pooch Paradise, where it was recently the ultimate pooch that just closed in May. Um, we're going to have a maximum of 30 dogs at a time, and it's going to be daycare and overnight boarding. Okay. And so, uh, have you done this? Uh, you, have you done this type of work before? Yeah, yeah, I worked at Kim's Grooming Doggy Daycare and Kennel, which is behind the Rainham Taunton Dog Track. Okay. So, how long are you out there? I worked there for five years. Five years. Okay. Good. Yeah. The board has any questions? Um, 30 dogs? Whereabouts is this at 890 Broadway? I'm uh, sorry. It's I across the street from China Garden. Oh. There was a hair oh, salon in the front, okay. that white building, and then um, the blue building in the back. I see. I see. Is there, are there many residences in that area? And that? Oh, All yeah. 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 Okay. 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 Yeah. So there was a kennel there previously, right. so this is a new ownership. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't uh, familiar with that. Sure. Where it was. Fine. 
No, I don't have any questions. I don't see uh, there's any public comments. I don't believe there's anybody here to speak publicly about this. So what's your... Uh, yeah, I have no questions either. I would motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So you. approved. Good luck. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And uh, next, uh, an application on uh, uh, Route 14 Motors LLC doing business as Route 138 Motor Car Company. Mark Gablehart, President for the transfer of a Class 2 used vehicle dealer's license at 38 Broadway. So, uh, is Mark here? I am here. Yes, please. Sure. Thank you. Please, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Mark Abelhart. I'm the owner of uh, Route 14 Motors LLC, which is uh, Route 138 Motor Car Company. You may have seen us at 420 Broadway in Taunton. And uh, what we'd like to do is we'd like to move our business to Raynham. We'd like to move to a nicer, better facility. Our business model is pretty simple. Um, we are, do our business in a very positive way with a lot of honesty and integrity. You'll find that uh, for the seventh year in a row, we've been rated as A plus as a retailer by the Better Business Bureau. And what we specialize in is we specialize in helping people who have had issues with their credit over time. Uh, we specialize in helping them get into cars with our guaranteed credit approval product. And uh, myself personally, a lot of experience. I'm a second generation automobile guy. Uh, my father worked for General Motors for years and then my mother said to him, I got five brothers and sisters and uh, my mother said, listen, you got to stop moving these kids all over the country because when my dad got a promotion, you know, he would have to go somewhere and my mom would drag us along and pack up the house. So my father went into retail in 1964. And what I would do is when I wasn't in school, uh, my father took me to the dealership and he put me to work with like a hose and a bucket <laughs> and with a broom. And just, you know, he said, listen, you're not going to get the opportunity that a lot of um, kids get. You're going to learn the business from the back forward. And so Having done that, having been in retail and run franchise stores and franchise groups for a number of years, back in 2006, when my children were through college, <coughs> and um, so we're all done, we're all, my wife and I were all done paying for that, you know, I took the opportunity and bought an existing business route, 14 Motors in Pembroke. Uh, we were there for about five years, and we had very quickly outgrown the facility. It wasn't large enough. The license was for 30 cars and we were kind of off on a back street. And so when we had an opportunity about two and a half years ago to move over to Taunton and we looked at our business model and our guaranteed credit approval product, we said, you know what, this is the place to be. And since we've done that, we've tripled and quadrupled our business. So um, good neighborhood to be in, I guess. And so that's the reason why we would like to move into Raynham because we'd like to improve our business in a better facility that has better exposure and better visibility. Very well spoken. Thank you. Any and questions? Raynham is that place. <laughs> well, thank you. I don't believe I have any questions. You seem to answer anything that I had thought of, how long you had been in business sure. and what you had done and so on. So I don't have any questions, sir. Sure. No, no questions. And uh, I think I speak for all of us when I say thank you for the compliments. Yes. We take pride in the town that we run and um, and being business friendly and, and attractive in a general sense. And so we appreciate that. So I, I motion to approve. Second. And, and just if I can say one thing, I certainly hope I have a grandson that my one of my daughters and son-in-laws live right in Raynham on Finch Drive. And he's about three and a half years old. And he's already lining up his matchbox cars. So someday <laughs> I hope, you know, Turn in the, in the future, him. the license will be in his name. <laughs> give, him the, give him the broom and the brush first. I, oh, believe me, I'm going to do that. So <laughs> Very good. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. The so granted. Uh, good luck with your move. Thank with you very your much. Move very kind of you. Thank you. Appreciate it. And any, did, 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 I'd say I'll no public. The owner of the license, so okay. So okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay. No public comment. Thank you for being here. So done. Thank you. Yep. Chief. Busy night. Yeah. Midsummer here. Oh, early summer. Uh, my monthly report. Uh, we still, unfortunately, have one officer on uh, injury on duty leave, 
and we have one dispatcher on extended sick leave. Uh, in the last month, we've logged 1,135 incidents. We've charged 40 people with crimes. Uh, the heroin drug abuse problem overall still on a decline. Unfortunately, one fatality, June 13th, we had a 26-year-old male who died of an overdose, uh, appeared to be heroin. Uh, on a positive note, the Temple Grand opening that went June 11th to 15th uh, probably couldn't have gone any better. Um, it was probably one of the most complex events the police department has ever dealt with. Uh, the planning, the coordination of state, federal, and local resources was, uh, was challenging at times, um, but we got through it. Uh, the entire department performed an exemplary uh, manner. Um, I think I've mentioned to the board. Um, in this case, our local police department was almost on the world stage um, where you have international um, folks coming into our town. Uh, we were the face of American government, and I think we represented that well. Um, we got nothing but positive feedback from those folks. Uh, now we've built a positive relationship with them for the long term. Um, so that went very well, and then hopefully we'll build on that. And uh, also I wanted to add, Little Lou, who was here earlier, his speed camp in the summer, he runs his speed camp at the schools. I wanted to mention that with the board, maybe something Mark had mentioned. Uh, it runs 9.30 to 11, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, it runs for six weeks until the beginning of August. And he had 66 kids on his first day. So oh my he's uh, busy down there running the kids, getting them tired. So that's the, that's the goal there. So, thank you. Thank you, Chief. But uh, I would like to add that uh, the work that you did at the temple, you were the face of the country insofar as that work goes. Yes. You had FBI here. Yes, we did. You had uh, other security groups from around the country, which you haven't mentioned, but I know there were more than several that were here that yes. you coordinated. And so a lot of credit goes to the job that your force did in making that a seamless event. So congratulations. I certainly offer my congratulations to you also. It was a great job. Pass that on to all the men and women that so ably I will. represented the town of Rainham. Absolutely. No, the chairman speaks for the board. Yeah, okay. Well done. Right. Yeah, thank, thank you, you, Chief. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Um, any old business? Oh, appointments, yep, I do have that. Yes, that is. So I have a roster of appointments for fiscal year uh, 15. Has the board had a chance to review the appointments? Motion to approve. Motion? Motion to approve this week. Second. Second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, the appointments are official. Okay, so now may we have the town administrator's report. Uh, <clears throat> we are... Our town hall will be on summer schedule starting next Tuesday evening. We'll be closed every other Tuesday evening, and that will uh, coordinate with the, the uh, selectmen's summer schedule. So <clears throat> the following uh, Tuesday evenings, we will be closed July 1st, July 15th, July 29th, August 12th, and August 26th. And that's from, we'll be closed from 6 to 8 p.m. Um, <clears throat> all departments are busy with the end of uh, the fiscal year procedures for payroll and invoices. Uh, Town Accountant David Grab issued a, some clear procedures to f be followed, and departments are responsible for making sure they do not go over budget. And uh, to help them with that, we do have reserve fund transfers, and we still have money in that account and line item transfers uh, that can be done with the approval of the Finance Committee and the Board. So. Um, the household hazardous waste day went well. We had a good turnout uh, a week ago Saturday, and lots of hazardous material removed from the town. Uh, on the Orchard Street project, uh, engineer Jim Noyes has set up a meeting with Mass Highway uh, regarding that project and the sidewalk issue that came up. And I believe also our incoming superintendent, Ed Buckley, will be able to attend, and that's on June 8th. Uh, so next selectman, next meeting, uh, there, I mean next Tuesday there will be no meeting. And the only other thing upcoming, uh, Southeastern Mass Health Group Steering Committee meeting tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, correspondence. 
I have here a, uh, it's, it's a, an addendum to the Sergio uh, DPW supplies. There are additional supplies that are based on the earlier approval that we gave. So uh, I believe this just really requires a, a motion to approve these. Yep. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Goes to you. Um, I have a, a letter here from the Finance Committee uh, from Dwayne Wheeler. At the Finance Committee meeting held on June 23rd, 2014, the committee elected the following to serve for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2015. Gilbert Aligi, Chairman, James Ross, Vice Chairman, very truly yours, as I said, Dwayne Wheeler, current chair. So we welcome Gil and James uh, to head up the Finance Committee, and uh, they're standing on some pretty heavy, steep shoulders uh, with uh, Dwayne leaving. Mention at this point then that we do have two vacancies on the finance committee. Right Mr. Ahead. Wheeler is, is um, retiring, and uh, Mr. Bentley also retired. So there's two vacancies to fill. So we need two people. Two people that know a little bit about finance. That would be helpful. Very helpful. Okay. Submit your request to the town administrator. I have here a. Um, an application for Constable uh, Ian Daly. This is a reappointment. The chief has approved this. Uh, he's acknowledged it. Uh, do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. So moved. I have here additional correspondence. Uh, writing to the selectmen to approve a second one-day liquor license for the Edgewood Club this summer, most likely on a date in mid to late August uh, before we select the date and begin planning. It is important for us to know whether this would be approved. Would you please add this to the topics for your next Tuesday meeting? So there, uh, the uh, Edgewood Club is really asking prospectively uh, for this approval. I think we can grant that prospectively. And when they pick a date, consider that specific date. So are we okay with this? Yeah, um, we're fine. Just obviously let us know yep. specifics. We need the specifics. Okay. Um, PAC 29. Uh, would you like to uh, see what date are we looking at? The date's October 3rd, 10th, and 17th. For PAC 29, uh, do we have a motion on that? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor, aye. Bless, Bless you. you. I have here uh, a correspondence from Diamond Life United Services Incorporated. Um, they would like uh, several dates, which we are looking at July 23rd, September 11, and October 3rd. And um, do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. And two more. Um, tag day date requested 626 Threshold Ministries. Uh, contact Frank Denul. Do I have a motion on this? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. One last one, and this is from the town clerk. She's asked me to read this at our meeting. The town hall employees would like to take a moment to express their gratitude to firefighters Jeffrey Callagher and Michael Haggerty for taking the time out of their day to demonstrate and explain how to administer bystander CPR. In addition to a working knowledge of this potentially life-saving procedure, we are also feeling more comfortable in how to respond in the event of an emergency. Hopefully, we will never need to use what they taught us. So that's a thanks to our fire department for their fine work. Okay. So, having said that, uh, press time. Uh, not, tonight. not tonight. Any emergency business? The seeing no citizen and community input. Uh, yep. Motion to adjourn. Sign the bills. No business thereafter. Sir. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, folks.